Well, hello there. That one, Elliot Lopez. No, 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 no posting your stuff. That's against the rules. All the Mr. Lauchu and all the teachers were saying how that's we gotta. Even the district is saying we have to find a way to get students to not do that for security reasons. Not one simple innocent batman posting which you need to take off the screen that is fine but what happens is is that encourages somebody else to do one and then it starts to slide into inappropriate so take the batman who's doing the batman one who is that hello can you hear me so mr rosenthal for that they just have an account that they signed in and it's their profile picture they're not actually like got it oh, i see right right that makes sense all right, well, that's fine. As long as that's, when I pin my video, I wonder if that means you guys don't see people coming in like that. So I just pin my video. Now, I don't see people when they come in anymore. I don't see their, their names. Oh, thank you. All right, so I got David's warm up is on the board here. So that's the one we're gonna do. Hope the lighting's okay. Can you guys see the problem? Yes. Hey, I joined. I can't hear anything. Hello? Hello? Yeah. She wasn't all school. She was down. I know. And Zig saved us by posting the link. <laughs> mm hmm. You need like a notepad or something. That's what I was telling people. Just put it somewhere that doesn't depend on the internet. Copy and paste it in a Word document is the easiest thing to do. Or, you know, you don't need the internet. Notepad, anything. Calendar, even. Which one? Calendar. Calendar. Well, um, calendar you can access without the internet. No, but um, Schoology. If only Schoology is down, not the whole internet, which means you can still access the internet. Yeah, but what if your Wi-Fi is down? Then how do you access Zoom? True. Touche. Exactly. I take it you use your calendar to get in. Yes. So you're def <laughs> you're defending your methodology, which is a good one. Mr. Rosenthal, mm -hmm. what's the question on the top asking for? I just see a circle and some stuff. That's just 12-1. What I was going to say is if you finish this, see if you can reprove 12-1. Find volume. Oh, uh, Converse. Uh-uh. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, that's what we're starting today. You could try to prove the Converse of 12-1, which is 12-2. I've been bad with my water drinking. Today I'm trying to drink water it's instead of Snapple, which is fine, but uh, water's the best. 
15 participants with only two minutes to go. This is getting bad. Schoology is down to the people. Yeah, Schoology is down, so they can't access the link because they don't want to actually write it down because they're lazy. Yeah. They're lazy. They let's just say, like always assume. Let's say a percentage of them, that's the reason. We don't know the percent. It could be 100%. Ziggy, it's not that people are lazy. They just, like, didn't, like, like, they didn't assume that school would be, be down. Well, and, you know, there were no... It's been down before. Yeah, there were no signs that it would ever, that it was a risk that it would go down, right? It was there. Oh, it no. no. D- yesterday, it also went down, but only for a couple of minutes. Yeah, but the there were... Zero- that's down on, like, every single... Pop- there were zero red flags that Schoology could even possibly go down, right? No. Well, there were... I mean, yeah, but, but the thing is, always goes down, I'm, and well, if like everybody in the warning. morning goes on to He's it, it's going to go down, no matter what. I'm being facetious. I'm being sarcastic. Oh, okay. There are lots of red flags that Schoology is unstable and can go down. But, you know, not everybody's a chess player, and you know what I mean by that is a, chess, a good chess player is somebody that thinks ahead, right? So thinking ahead in your life is important. But this is going to... Del- well, I guess people who come in later are going to um, have to watch the video. We're on a we're on a schedule, so this is just the way it goes. They're probably frantically working on it. It's just weird to me that they have to do this every day and cannot put a more permanent fix in place. It's as if the, you know, there, there are people, I, I, I know I started this way yesterday, uh, but you would think that they would get the handle on it somehow, but they're just not able to combat this problem. Okay, everybody's working on this. We're officially begun. Good morning to those who are here. And uh, if you're watching the video later, good morning to you. Well, good afternoon or whenever you're accessing this video. This is a sphere. This is David's problem, given an arc from A to B here, the measure of it being 40 degrees, and then also being given the length of the arc, um, you should be able to find the volume and the surface area. So go ahead and try to do that. If you haven't done it, post your answer in the, um, you know, in the chat. And I have the chat back to private, so now I'm the only one who could see it. Or host only, host only is what how I have it. And in a thirty seconds here, twenty seconds or so, I'm going to start on the first step of what you need to do for those that are stuck and just are not making any kind of movement in here. Probably, you know, in the beginning you kind of look at it and go, hmm, what do I do with that? And then you, you know, after 10, 5, 15, however many seconds you realize, oh, I think I can do this with that. But for those that aren't able to do that with it, I'll give you that first step in just shortly here. All right. So what I need, what I do is I look at my final, where am I going, right? Where, where, where you know, my chemistry teacher told me, Mr. Griffin, a long time ago, told me that there's three steps to solving any problem. Know where you are, that's this stuff. That's the picture, that's all this stuff. That's what you have, you're given, okay? Know where you're going, what are you trying to do? That's your vision, your goal, the missions. Uh, Actually, the missions are how to get there. So the, the vision is, where are you going? And then the mission is, how do I get there? That's your mission, all right, so getting there. A lot of people think it's the, I can't get seem to get places. Well, a lot of the times, actually, probably, mo- I'm guessing most of the times, it's they either don't know where they're starting or they don't know where they're going, and they're just working blindly in some direction. All right, so this is problem solving in general. Um, so you don't have to work on any one of those at any one given time. So you can tr- take your brain away from one when you're stuck and go to another one of those aspects, and that's a really nice checklist for doing any problem solving is, all right, I see what I'm given, and I kind of don't know what to do with that. Let me move my brain over to focusing on where I'm going. Okay. And you kind of bounce back and forth between those two things before you realize, okay, my brain is starting to come up with ideas or it's being prompted to head towards some mission of getting there. 
All right, that's a little, a little rant or blurb on problem solving in general. Okay, so volume, surface area. Ah, let me maybe write out the formula for volume. And the, the formula for surface area, the baseball, four circles. Ah, the only variable in there is R. Oh, I need R. I know what I need. I need R. Okay, let me go back to what I have. I don't have R. Can I get R? Yes, I can get R. All right, how do I get R? Well, let's see. What can I get out of what I have? Well, I know that 40 degrees is out of 360. 360. And I can reduce that, and I can reduce it more to one ninth. Okay, and that's equal. That's the degrees of the arc out of the total. That is a rate. That ratio will be equal to the length of this compared to the entire what? S sphere. No, that's circumference. Circumference. This length, arc length, is compared to the whole circumference. Is the same as comparing the measure of the arc to the whole 360 degrees. Degrees compared to degrees. Length compared to length, which is circumference. Ah, and now I realize the connection. Once I get circumference, I can then get radius from that, and there I've made a bridge, okay? So uh, let's go and continue this way then, all right? So then this length is five millimeters compared to an unknown circumference, okay? So then when I cross multiply, I end up getting that C is equal to 45, all right? Now, that's not the radius. I can't, I'm not gonna go right to the radius here. I could using two pi r, but I like pi d or d pi. So I'm gonna say c divided by pi gives me my diameter, okay? So 45 over pi. All right, now the radius is half of that, okay? So the radius is half of 45 over pi, which is 22.5 over pi. And now I have what I need for those formulas. Okay. All right. So um, we don't need to continue the problem. This is just calculator work. And it was really the doing of the problem is already done. Have any questions about that? Now you might see if this is 22.5 over pi and you're cubing that, right? then the numerator is being cubed and the denominator is being cubed, right? You can eliminate that pi right there with one of the repeated pies that you're using. Hold on, let me close that window up. My neighbor's dog barks pretty much on and off all day long. All right, um, so any questions about this problem? Okay, so right now, what I would like you to do is look at theorem 12.2, which is the converse of 12.1. Go ahead and read that, and I'll read it out loud as you're reading along. If a line in the plane of a circle is perpendicular to a radius at its endpoint, which would be P, right? This line is perpendicular to a radius at its endpoint. Not O, but at P, right? On the circle. Then the line is tangent to the circle. See if you could prove that. Will we use indirect reasoning? I'm not telling you. Use whatever you think you can use from what you've learned this year. So this is the converse of 12.1. I'm gonna kind of go down a little bit so you can see the picture. There's a, there's a B down there. And I'll leave what, the, what it says so you can go back to that. On a smart board, I would move this up, but I cannot. It's a PDF right now. And I'm going to start drawing the, what you see here also. Still hear the dog. Point P is on the circle. That's important. And we're given this is perpendicular.
prove that it must be tangent. So how are you going to prove that? It's, you're going to have to go back to the definition of tangent. Andrew, I can't see anything on the screen. It is really blurry. Uh, what about when I walk away from it like that? Is that better? It's fine now. Okay, good. Okay, so you're trying to prove that that red line must be a tangent line. What is the definition of a tangent? In a plane, right? In a plane where a line is in the plane of a circle, that line intersects the circle at exactly one point. If a line is stuck in a plane with a circle, stuck there like we are with our families in the house, then what are the different ways that the line can intersect a circle? It can go through it and intersect at two points. That's the secant. It can intersect at one point. That's the tangent. Or it can not intersect it at all. No points. So two, one, zero. Are there any other possibilities? In, when the line is stuck in the plane of the circle, are there any other possibilities? Or is it just these three? Can anybody think of any other way for a line to interact with the circle? It either doesn't intersect at all, but it's still in the same plane, it intersects at one point only exactly, and we define that's our definition of a tangent, which is what we're saying that this has to be if that's perpendicular. And then it intersects at two points. Could it intersect at three points and still be a line? You guys there? If it was curved, could it then be, it wouldn't be a line. line. Could it be curved if it's in a plane? No. On a sphere, so non-Euclidean geometry, the equator of Earth, let's say, for example, is would be considered a line, but that's defining it in non-Euclidean, non-planar. We're doing planar geometry, and we even stipulated that we're in a plane, okay? Not a spherical plane, a Euclidean plane, okay? A plane that you have come to know very well. All right, so then, then if it's a line based on the a Euclidean plane, it's not going to curve back and intersect the circle again. All right, so these, I would say, unless somebody can come up with some counterexample, that these are the only three options. You have to show that it is this one. Why is this one ruled out right away? Why is the non-intersection ruled out right away? Because it's a point where the line is with the circle, I guess. It, it, the answer to that's in the given. Because how can the radius be perpendicular? No, it is perpendicular, but look at the given. Because it's end point on the circle. If they line, they're talking about this here, this, this one here, okay? If that line of a circle is perpendicular to a, oh, you're saying then if it doesn't touch, how could it be perpendicular to the radius? That's yeah, that's what I'm saying. At its end point on the circle. So the radius has to have an end point on the circle, and that has to be perpendicular at that point that's on the circle, which means that line has to touch the circle. So this is out. It's got to be one of these two. All right, so let's, let's do it indirectly, as Zig was saying. Okay, so how do we do an indirect proof? You assume the negation of the what? The given or the proof? The given. No, it's actually the other way around. You assume the negation of what you're trying to prove. Assume that it's not tangent. If it's not tangent, what, are your, what is your only choice? It is tangent. Um, Not tangent. What's your other choice? Secant. Secant. Yeah. That's it. This can't be because it already off the beginning violates the given. You're not, you're given something that's not this. So given this, 
let's assume that it is not tangent. Then we will assume that this is a secant, which is the only other option. If we, if we show a contradiction and it's perpendicular at that point, right? It's perpendicular at that point, call that point P, right? And then we'll call this point A. So now it's a secant. And if we can show that there's a contradiction, that this can't be true, then the only other option would be that it is tangent. OK? This should be simple. OA is congruent to OP because all radii are congruent. Definition of a circle. OK? By the base angles theorem, these angles here, angle OAP and angle OPA, have to be congruent by the base angles theorem. So they're both 90 degrees because they have the same measure. We also proved earlier this year that in a triangle, there can be no more than one right angle in a triangle. Therefore, we have a contradiction already. See that? OK, so if we already have a contradiction, then our assumption that this line could be a secant is false. And therefore, the only option is that it must be a tangent line. That's our conclusion, that it must be a tangent line. Any questions about that? Uh, could you repeat that, Mr. Rose? I just need to get down. Sure. So we said that assume that if a, a line is perpendicular at, to a radius of a circle, circle O, at its end point on the circle, point P, we are trying to prove that this must be a tangent line. So what we say is assume that you're given those same conditions, but that it's not a tangent line. So the only other option is that it's not touching the circle at all, which is ruled out immediately in the given that it is on the circle. Do we have to prove this on the test? No, you need to understand this. Okay, so then the only other option then would be that it's a secant line, right? We have to prove that it can't be a secant line. All right, so assume that it is a secant line right, and it's given that this is perpendicular at that point, then when you draw that other radius, seeing that two radii in the same circle must be congruent by the definition of a circle, you get this triangle with its isosceles. So by the base angles theorem, this angle has to be the same as that angle, which would give you two right angles in a triangle, which is not possible, which we proved earlier in the year, there can be at most one right triangle or one right angle in a triangle. Thank you, Mr. Or you can say that the, the, that the two congruent segments, OP and OA, are non-parallel, which means they cannot both be perpendicular to the same line. Same line. Yeah, but we, didn't, we don't have a theorem that says that. That's like a converse of a theorem that we have. If two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then those lines are parallel. Um, I don't know if, I don't recall doing a converse to that, although I don't think that you would have a problem doing that. Okay, any questions about 12-2? So, what do we get out of this? Tangent lines are perpendicular. Why? This is really, really important to angular momentum for why we are able to have an Earth with people on it. If we had why? A, let's say we had a circular orbit around the Earth. Let's say that this is Earth, right? And here's us, uh, around the sun, sorry. So. Let me call that sun. Sun and earth will be just this little dot. Gravity is accelerating us what direction? Accelerating is a inward. Towards the center of the mass of the sun, right? So we're headed straight there. So you can even think of that as a radius too. Now we're not in a circular orbit, but let's just get this idea. Assume that it was a circular orbit. Why are we not going straight into the sun? The sun's gravity is accelerating us. Acceleration is a vector. It has magnitude and direction right there. Okay, we're building what you see up here. What must be, if, 
if there's only that force acting on Earth, we should then go right into the sun and should never have existed. And there's also inertial movement because the Earth wishes to move in its own path, which counteracts the vector of the sun. Right. Pulls it towards the sun. We were, exactly. And if we were to be in a circular orbit, there must be some initial force in this direction, tangent to, perpendicular here. Okay? And then we, that would have been some initial velocity, which is a vector, that we were traveling in that direction. Okay? Now, if that's perpendicular, we would have ended up in a circular orbit. But we're elliptical, so guess what? Our, our initial velocity vector is not perpendicular to the acceleration due to the gravitation of the sun. It's at an angle. So we're actually at a secant, right? This angle is a different angle. Okay, so since we're at a secant, then we end up, the, the resultant vector is going to be somewhere in between, right? And then we end up continuing that forever. So we're being accel accelerated towards the center of mass, but we have an initial velocity, which why doesn't that, velo that velocity doesn't change because there's no outside force to stop it, right? Any, an object in motion, Newton's laws, will stay in motion, which it is. It's staying, going in that direction the whole time. But the sun, you're also being accelerated towards the sun, okay? So um, that's what's going on with the orbit. Now we can get into more detail with, well, as soon as you move from that position, the acceler your, your vectors are going to, this vector is going to change, right? You're not accelerate. If when I'm over here, what direction is acceleration when Earth is there? It's not headed that way anymore. It's not going north-south. It's not going north. It's now going that way. And remember, a vector is made up of not just magnitude. The magnitude stays the same, but the direction changes. So the direction keeps changing for the acceleration. What about for velocity? Does the velocity direction change? Anybody? Now, I haven't studied this. I, I took astronomy it's in, you know, in college. They didn't talk about it. Okay, so I don't know. I'm trying to figure this out with you. So as this goes around, is there anything that should be changing this? This velocity is what moves us so that this has to then change its direction because the gravity doesn't care where you are. It's going to pull towards the center, right? Well, does, doesn't the velocity have to stay constant? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this doesn't change its direction or magnitude. Why? Yeah. Why? It does. That's why when you go in a circle, the net velocity is zero. When you go in a circle, it is? Oh, yeah, so the net that's a centripetal force. So your overall but that's velocity. the thing. The Earth isn't going in a circle. Yeah, but if it were, it would be zero. Why? Because this, these are perpendicular and two. Well, because each, each, each of the, each of the velocity, well, each of the vectors cancel each other out because Eat every one, for every one, there's an opposite one. So that if you're pointing one direction, there's not one on the other side that's pointing the opposite direction at the same speed. And so they would all cancel each other out. What would be focused in the other direction? So let's just take this velocity vector. What's going in the other direction? Rotate it 180 degrees around the sun axis. Like that? Yeah, that is going the opposite direction from the initial one with the same speed. It's not in those two places at the same time. So this is basically a, how a lever works. As you push a lever up, or if you push a lever down, the other side goes up, or a doorknob. As you rotate this side, this side goes, they go like that, right? So is that what you're talking about? But this is a a body a planetary body right yeah it's only going in one yeah there's no planetary body over here while it's over here and when it's over here it's not over here so i don't know 
I don't you're thinking, know. You're thinking in 3D, which means you're not thinking over time. You, and, and speed is over time. So you couldn't even call that a, um, a vector if it wasn't over time because there's no speed at all. So, um, well, no, 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 no. In calculus, what we're going to do is we're going to find what instantaneous velocity is at a given time. What was your velocity at that moment in time? So when you do calculus, you're going to find out what was the velocity at that moment. So you, is that the derivative of the function? Yes. So it will, exactly. It, that's, that's right. At a given x coordinate, right? But at a given time, x is, we usually use the x axis for time. So at a given time would be a given x coordinate, an input that you plug into the to the function, okay? Or but don't don't we do we stay on the same orbit, or does our does our orbit change once in a while? I believe it's the same orbit. It's an ellipse. Well, so then, so then the, 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 orbit, the orbit changes, but in this model that we're talking about right now, we're assuming that it's the same because mo even astronomers sometimes. For basic purposes, assume that it's the same. Unless other forces are acting on it, which in the universe or in our solar system or in our general vicinity, there are other things out there. There's the moon, there's uh, other planets that could affect things. Okay. All right. So I'm just saying what we're talking about, you could see the conversation could go way, there's so many implications in astronomy, in engineering, but um, when one force is going perpendicular to another force, that force is not affecting that force, right? That force is going to be going in that direction, and that velocity isn't going to change it, but the result is affected by both. The result, and the result is the orbit, okay? All right, that's enough of that. Let's move on. Let's go back to the easy. There we go. Go ahead and see if you can figure this one out. Is ML segment tangent to ON or to circle N at point L? Oh, Mr. Rosenthal, mm -hmm. is that a 29 or 24? It's a 24. Okay. Now be careful on your test. Sometimes I'll give you this entire length here, but sometimes that number will only refer to this or to the radius, which you know is seven, right? The radius is seven. So this is seven. And since this whole thing is 25, then this would be 18 from here to here. So sometimes you're going to have that. Is that, is that a special right triangle, 724, 24? I don't know, is it? I feel like it is. You feel like it is? Yeah, because I think I remember one of those, like... Apparently you know, so. It has to be a right triangle, right? It would be, because 24 is not larger than 25 squared plus 7. The, the, the angle is... The hypotenuse needs to be longer than... The right yeah, angle is next a, to the 24. It, it is a right It is a right triangle. The right angle is next to the 24, not the 24. It really is about perspective, though. It is because where's the right angle? If this is tangent, this is the right angle. If it is. Not that. You were it's drawn so it looks like so it looks like that's the hypotenuse. Though this would be the hypotenuse here. It's just the way I drew it. So let's see. Seven squared plus twenty-four it squared. Right, it is a red triangle. Squared. Or it is correct. Nine. What's twenty-four squared? No. 576. It's 576. Wait, Mr. Rosenthal, so all we need to do to find out is see if it's a right triangle? Yeah, the Pythagorean theorem, I guess. It's the right triangle. It's the right triangle, right? So now you've shown, yes, this is perpendicular. If this is perpendicular, we just proved something. This must be a tangent line, right? Which answers the question. Yes, that's a tangent line. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's look at this one. If a circle 
is circumscribed. I'm going to try to draw this as I read it. If a circle is circumscribed about a triangle, here's a triangle. That's a circle circumscribed about a triangle. The triangle we say is inscribed in the circle. So this triangle is inscribed in the circle. The circle you could say is circumscribed about the triangle. Any questions about that? That's the wording. The circle is circumscribed about the triangle. The triangle is inscribed in the circle. Similarly, when a circle is inscribed in a triangle, like where, the, where we did the in-center, remember that? In, this would be circum-center, right? That's the circum-center. That's the in-center, remember that? Yeah. It's equidistant from the sides. The circum-center is equidistant from the vertices. Remember that? Okay, yeah. this one, when a circle is inscribed in a triangle, you can actually say the triangle is circumscribed about the circle. All right, now, which one pertains to what we're talking about, do you think? Picture A or picture B? B. Why does B pertain to what we're discussing now? Because those look like tangents. Yes. When this is true, then these are tangents because it touches the circle at <coughs> one point. Okay? So the tangent segment, now we're going to say something that's going to be a theorem. What do you think is there true about the tangent segments from each vertex? So take from they're, they're congruent. Yeah, so these are congruent, but these here at C, right, they're not necessarily congruent to these, but they're congruent to each other. Wait, is the whole thing congruent or the, those no. little segments? No, look, these, this three and two is not congruent to one and two. One and two is not congruent to three and one, right? Okay. Okay, all right. But look, look at the pieces that are congruent. It's from a point outside the circle drawn to the, to the two different tangent points, okay? Those have to be congruent, all right? So that's what the theorem is gonna say. Any questions about that before I move on? Everybody see where we're going with this? Okay. Okay, circumscribed about the triangle. This circle is inscribed in the triangle. Moving along. Okay, here's the theorem. The two segments tangent to a circle from a point outside the circle are congruent. How do we prove that? Try to prove that now. This proof is not as difficult as the ones we've already done. This one. Which, which theorem? This one is theorem 12.3. The two segments tangent to a circle from a point outside the circle are congruent. Is this gonna be on the test? Could be. This one's, this one, everybody can do this one. Joseph, mute your mic. Okay, this way. Okay, you're trying to prove that AB is congruent to CB. What are you given? They are tangent. Given AB, BA is tangent to circle O, and BC is tangent to circle O at point A and point C, respectively. Oh, Natalie, that was a while ago, huh, the proof? Uh, you'll have to go on the video at this point. I didn't see it, I'm yeah, sorry. it's fine. Uh, D iPhone 3, who's that? No, oh, that's me here, I'll change it. I don't know why yeah. it keeps doing Oh, okay, no problem. Um, can we make this a kite? Yes. Uh, who is this with, uh, not understand? Oh, Mitchell. All right, Mitchell, that's a close one. It's almost like doing that is like in place of 
the way you guys express yourselves through clothing, but now you don't can't do that, so you're doing it through your name. Just a couple of you. I'm not going to get in your way, just as long as it's appropriate. Okay, somebody had a good idea. What if you draw radii to the circle? I'm going to keep my original. Indirect reasoning. Assume no, that the. You don't need it, but you you could. I'm not saying you you don't have. You can, you can you make a quadrilateral and divide it into two triangles? Yep, you sure can. Okay, but wait. If these are radii, wait a minute. If these are tangents, then we know from theorem twelve one that they're all, they're perpendicular to mm -hmm. AB and OT is perpendicular to CB. But Mr. Rosenthal, do you draw an auxiliary that, segment from O to B? Yes. That makes a, that makes a and then that makes a and then the reflexive property that's congruence. And we know that both the radius okay, are congruent. Wait, wait, real quickly, let me just repeat what he said. Through two points, postulate one one, so you get OB. Through any two points, there's a line, right? And then with the reflexive property, OB is congruent to itself. SSA is not a way. Hold on. There is no SSA. You know, but you have right triangles, so how about HL? HL theorem. Good point. All radii are congruent by the definition of a circle. Okay. And now you have two right triangles with a hypotenuse and a leg congruent. So by HL, these are congruent and then CBCTC. Are congruent. And so then by CBCTC, AB and CB are congruent. Okay. Mr. Rosenthal, didn't we find when we did it earlier that um, the tangent of the angle was the a member, the tangent of the angle was the length of the segment? Yes. Then couldn't we say that which angle was it that um, we did it, that, that we use? Theta. Oh, so theta on the outside, okay. You could still, you could say that tangent of the angle. Or no, this could have been theta and you drew this down to here, yeah. right? Yeah. Go ahead. Can you say that tangent of theta is equal to AB and then tangent of theta is equal to CB and then say that AB is equal to CB and, and then therefore AB is congruent to CB? I believe you can. I believe you can, yes. Wait, can't we already just say CPCTC? Yes, that's the way I did it. Do we have anything proven for like properties of kites or whatever? The diet, the half D1, D2? Just um, like if two sides are congruent and two angles are congruent, then the other two sides are congruent, something like that. Wait, Mr. Rosenthal, um, are AO and OC congruent by construction? Hold on, let me answer his question first. You Sorry. Didn't know, you didn't know it was a kite until you said that these were congruent, right? By definition of a kite, two adjacent congruent sides, two sets, right? But once you said that, the proof was over. So you can't put the cart before the horse. So you can't say that I'm going to use this being a kite to prove that these are congruent because you would already have known that they're congruent. Okay, go ahead and ask your question. That was my question. Oh, okay. Somebody else though I thought was asking a question? Guess not. Okay, any questions about this proof? Moving along. Okay. This one is a proof. Show that or prove that. Show is less formal, so you can do it in an informal way. This one's difficult, okay? So everybody, this is a nice challenge for you. Going back to this gear problem, read what it says. Show that BC is equal to GF. Show that this one is equal to that one. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to work on this as I draw, try to draw an accurate drawing here.
can't be happy with that. Look at that little gap right there. That thing measures 26.5 inches. What? Where did you get that from? Uh, uh, didn't we already do this? Uh, did we? Look at the problem. No. We found the we length between the centers. We did not find the, the congruent. Yeah, you found how far are the centers away. And you have, were given some information. This is different. Yeah. It's pretty simple. I was very happy that all the goals were to Christian Ronaldo because after every goal I had done the legends celebrities. That's well, in Daniel, mute yourself. Sorry. Mr. Rosenthal, can I say can I show how to solve the problem? Not yet. We need Not to give yet. up time. Any questions so far? In two and a half minutes, we're gonna start in on this. What can I do first? Wait, I, I, can you make the questions 45, 45, 90 triangles? I don't see any triangles here. What are you talking about? You can, uh, if you go from the center of the big circle to the, to the, tan, to the tangency point of the smaller circle, doesn't that divide the 90 degrees into 45? And then the other one is 45 by default? I don't know how you would know that. How do you know how far this is away? And doesn't a pulling this away change the angle? Right, if I attach these and I pull this point away, then this point has to connect to that point and it's gonna change the angle. It's gonna make this angle smaller as you pull this point B away. So you don't know how far away B is. From this but thing. it's still a 90 degree angle and all 90 degree things are congruent. All 90s are, but you're not, you don't know if you're going to get a 45, 45, 90. There's different right triangles. 45, 45, 90 is only one type. Anybody else? What can I do? Draw, a, draw um, extend BC so that it intersects an extended GF. Yes, like that. And by the last um, theorem that we pr proved, I don't remember which the one that says the segments or the tangent lines of the of the circles are congruent. You can find you can say that AF is congruent to AC. Okay, AF, the long one, is congruent to AC. So that means they're equal in measure, right? Yes. And, and then, then AB is congruent to AG. Yes. yes. And AB is a tangent, and this is a tangent, is equal to AG. Okay, so. Then by the ruler postulate, um, AF minus AC is equal to AB. No, AF minus AG is equal to GF and AC minus AB is equal to BC. And if you substitute in, I don't know exactly. I think you need the segment addition. Yeah. Can we say that AB plus BC, which is the one we want to end up with, is equal to AC? And AG plus GF is equal to AF. 
Okay. Then. AF and AC are congruent. So. AF and AC are equal. Okay, so I would rewrite this one. And now you see that these are equal to the same thing. Okay, so then these two are equal to each other. So we have, now we have AB plus BC is equal to AG plus GF. And AB and AG are congruent. So we can replace that with AB. It's on the test, Mr. Osto. Could be. So AG and AB are the same. And then by the subtraction property of equality, and you get what you were trying to prove. Okay. It seems when we do segment addition or angle addition to do a proof, people don't, their brains say that it's hard. But when you actually do it, it's not that hard. You just have to build, build the larger segment with the two. You're given two of them. You're given that these are the same and you're given that the long ones are the same. So you could find the medium piece, to meet the medium pieces to be the same. Could there be another proof, Mr. Rosenthal? Yes. We're only in 12 one still. We just started. So there will be more theorems. Any questions? I mean, another proof of this problem. Oh, could there be? I don't know. You'd have to work it out. Any questions? All right. Moving along. Okay, this is a test question. I recognize this from the test. This you should be able to do. I can't see you. And Quack. Yes, we know you're a duck. Hold our comments. Orange. They can hear you, by the way. Excuse me, who is this? I'm a duck. David. Yes, I know. It's illegal. Mr. Rosenthal, what happened to the proof? My mom accidentally unplugged the internet power. What happened? My, uh, my mom accidentally unplugged the Wi-Fi. Oh, we, so we use segment edition. Oh, okay. Right? So the two, the so. two small and the medium segment added up to the large. Right? Well, both the larges are the same. Okay. And the, the small and the medium on one was equal to the small and the medium of the other. But because both smalls were the same, you could subtract them off, leaving you medium equals medium. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, the perimeter of the triangle. This is, not a, this is not too much to do, if you know that last thing. So what the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fill in all the blanks. So what's this right there? 10. Here? 10. Eight, eight. It's from C. Oh, right, right. Okay, and what's this one? 15. And this one is 10. Okay, so basically it's 10 times 2, 15 times 2, and 8 times 2. Okay? Any questions about that? Wait, how do you know that AF is 10? Because it's... Oh, because it's the... Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, so on the proof problem, were we given the angle between... Uh, the uh, angle... 
Right, that the angle between the radius and the line drawn between the center points is congruent. In this, this last proof problem? If you draw a line between the center points, so the no. angle between that and the radius is not given to be congruent? No. We extended these till they met. No, I, well, I was just thinking about an alternative method, and oh, I was considering okay. do, would those two be congruent? Would the, from the center to the center, would that be? And, no, the center to the center, and then the angle between that and the radii for each circle. So if you drew it from the center point to center point. What angle huh? are you talking about now? Uh, ang uh, angle C, uh, wait, let's see, ang angle C, and the, the angle between C, the center, and the line. So, uh, <clears throat> C fingertip this way, this angle. Yes, yes. Would that be congruent on the other side? Yeah, were we given that? Uh, no, you weren't given that. Oh, okay. But you could try to prove that that's the case. Oh, I was just wondering, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, Mr. Rosenthal, for um, the next problem, the problem that you have on the board, the whiteboard, um, were you given that those lines were tangent lines? Yes, you have to be given that they're tangent. Because there's like no perpendicular things or anything like that. Like so they could be just be secants. Well, if, if they were secant, they were inscribed or the circle is inscribed into the triangle. If they were secant, then you would see two points of contact. Okay? Um so this one you're assuming that it is it's you're assuming that those are tangents is what you would do in this case. Okay, and on a test you could always ask, and I would say yes, they're tangents. Okay. All right, my favorite part. It's been a while, right? Since How dare you? Um. Okay, any questions? No. Yeah. So are we done? I'm thinking about that right Literally? now. I don't see a need to rush forward any longer. So I'm just gonna open up office hours now. And not if this is an April Fool's joke, I will be not pleased. We're not doing standardized tests anymore, right? No. At least for hey. this so that well, what if we have so much time. We're not in a rush. There's no reason to just keep pressing forward. Like Wait, this. Mr. Rosenthal, what about the SATs and APs for the high schoolers? Is everything canceled? I think SATs are canceled, but you got to check me on that. And But APs are not canceled. SATs are canceled. They are or are not? They are. I heard from my cousin. SATs or APs? SATs. Right. I think SATs are canceled, but APs are still yeah. on. All right, you guys are dismissed. I'll see you tomorrow's our last. But I'm going to stay on for questions. Thank okay, you. thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Thank you. Mr. Rosenthal. Thank you, Mr. Bye. Bye. Do me a favor, guys. If you don't have a question, go ahead and check out so that I can see who's in here. If your name is a name I don't recognize, I will remove you right now. I'm a duck. I'm David. I'm a duck is about to go. No. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Have a good day. See you tomorrow. You got it. I, Delta N. Who's that? I'm going to remove I, Delta N if you don't speak up. I think that's Ian. Oh, oh, Ian, yes, yes. Okay, I'm assuming if you're staying on right now that you have a question for me. David, did you see the warm up problem? I started with your problem. Okay. Nate, do you have any questions? Andrew, questions?
Nate, questions? David, questions? No? All right, I'm going to log off if you guys don't have any questions for me. Uh, I'll be looking at Schoology throughout the day, so you guys can ask me any questions there. Bye.